Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to do a how-to cleaning video on the Beretta ARX100. These guns are certainly becoming more and more popular every day and uh, some folks are a little intimidated in terms of taking it apart, disassembling it, reassembling it, all that stuff. So we'll show you how to do that here in the video. Before getting into the actual disassembly and cleaning, we'll go over what we're actually using here. Uh, we have two different bottles here, which are just repackaged bottles from stuff we had around the house of Break Free CLP. You can buy the stuff um, online. I'll put a link below for you guys to check it out and you know, pints and quarts and even gallons, I think. So just put it in smaller bottles makes it easier to apply, which is what both of these are here. Um, and before we get into that, as I know everyone's going to ask new shooters and stuff like that, what's the best? Uh, Break Free CLP is not the best at anything. It doesn't do the best job at cleaning, the best job at lubricating, nor the best job at protecting, but it does a pretty good job at all of them. Uh, some of you guys might like Frog Loop, Fire Clean, Rand CLP, Slip 2000, whatever. Uh, if you guys want to use those, those are totally fine. And uh, in terms of folks who want to use solvents, one thing I'll just kind of say about solvents in terms of weapons like this, especially, um, really the only place you're really going to need a solvent is in the barrel when you start to have a degradation in accuracy from copper fouling. Now, that's going to happen many rounds into it, generally over a thousand. So for general cleanings, you certainly don't need it. Um, but if you want to use solvents, that's totally fine. Just make sure you lubricate it. Um, the parts afterwards. So anyway, enough of my diatribe. Uh, we also have other tools we're using here, the Tipton polymer picks. Now a lot of folks want to use metal picks, which are fine, but keep in mind sometimes those picks are harder than some of the things in your gun and can scratch up your surfaces and actually gall and damage guns in some cases. So the Tipton ones work well. Again, we'll put a link below. They're pretty cheap. And we also have an Otis cleaning rod. This one here is a 223 caliber. Um, works really well on anything that has a barrel less than 20 inches. So we'll be fine here. Uh, old toothbrush and some cut up pieces of t-shirt. If you guys want to use gun patches, if that makes you feel good to buy them instead of using cut up t-shirt, feel free. Either one will work though. All right. So before we actually uh, get into the disassembly cleaning, we're going to verify that the gun is uh, clear. So you can push up here and we're going to lock our bolt to the rear. If I can actually do it. There we go. It's a little weird doing it on camera, not doing it with the natural motion. So verify within the chamber that we are clear. Now at this point, there's several different ways you can do it. You take your lower off, whatever, um, depending on what order you want to do it. And what we're going to do here is take our barrel off. Now for general cleaning, you don't need to take your barrel off. I'm doing it for demonstration purposes. You can leave it in there and just clean it. But we're going to do it here just to sort of show you. Now there's tabs on both sides of the rifle, sort of similar to a Glock pistol. For those of you guys that are familiar with that, what you're going to do is you're just going to pull down on those and pull your barrel out. Now I can't really get any leverage the way we're doing it here, so I'm gonna kind of do it off camera. It's really simple, guys, just with a camera in the way. It's a little bit awkward, so. And so once you actually get the first piece sort of unhooked, you're just gonna pull your barrel out. And if I can actually do it, there we go. That is it, that's your barrel and your piston. So we're gonna set those off to the side here. At this point, we're going to lock our bolt back to the rear. Went home there because I jarred it. And uh, so now we're going to take our, uh, hold on one second, we'll get a rag to wipe my hand off from that piston. So another important cleaning tool, <laughs> the rag. So um, at this point, what we're going to do is take our lower off. We'll do that next. To remove this lower piece, we first have to let our bolt go home. And uh, at this point, we're going to fold our stock by pushing this button right here the stock and hopefully we can get this on camera and kind of show what we're doing here basically this gigantic piece of plastic right here is sort of like a button and in order to be able to depress it like right now you can see i can't depress it you need to push up on your safety lever so we're going to push up on our safety lever and then in on this and it's kind of odd again on camera but that's what we're doing here so i'm going to push up safety lever and then in. you can see that button is sort of depressing at that point you're just going to pull the lower off Had to get it started off camera there again, just because it's sort of awkward. But once we get it started, as you can see here, you just kind of grab it, pull down, and this is your lower assembly. At this point, there's no tension here in your uh, bolt carrier group, if you will. And you're going to want to line it up with this little groove right here in the polymer, the charging handle, I should say. If you have the rifle configured for the right-hand side charging handle, it's the exact opposite of what we're doing here. Um, but at this point, you're just going to pull out, and you should hear a click 
and feel it actually come out. There you go. Um, so you can see, if we look right there, that little piece that's sticking out, if we can actually show it on camera, that little nub, that's what I'm referring to. Once that's out, then it's pulled out far enough. So at this point, we're gonna rotate this piece forward. And sometimes it's a little tricky to actually get it to line up here. And you just gotta kind of play with it, but you get it so that it'll rotate forward. Oops, so I can do it here, there you go. And you wanna put it right in line with the bore. So that way, um, once that happens, you can pull it straight out. And here is your bolt carrier assembly removed from the rifle. Polymer housing that remains is really maintenance free. If you look in the manual, there's almost nothing to do. In fact, I don't think there's anything to do. But if you want to wipe it out inside just to get some of that carbon in there out, by all means, feel free to do so. But there really isn't going to be all that much. And even if there is, it's not really all that consequential either to the operation of the gun. But I know some folks really like to clean their stuff well. So if you're going to do that, just wipe it out. When a lot of people clean the rifle, they're not going to want to take it down beyond this. And really, the manual says for field stripping, that's just fine. But we can actually remove our bolt from our carrier. And in order to do that, we're just going to push the little lever to either side. It doesn't matter which one. You're going to push your uh, bolt back and slide your uh, handle over, and your bolt will come out. At this point, you're completely disassembled. So what I recommend doing here at this point really is just wiping everything down. We'll put some CLP on this uh, piece of cloth here. And we're going to wipe everything down. Of note, you'll see that it is MP marked for magnetic particle tested. And uh, at the user level, just to let you guys know, it doesn't need to be broken out any more than this. So this is where we're at. Uh, you don't need to pull your extractors, nothing like that. Um, and what we're going to do is get up under our extractors, speaking of, because um, those are areas that do get fouled on any rifle. So what I like to do is just take the cloth and just uh, pick and work underneath there. And you can see from those two that we just used, that area, like I said, does get pretty dirty. So just keep doing that until your heart is content. It's as clean as it needs to be. Um, one of the beauties of CLP or any sort of all-purpose cleaner lubricant product is that you, while wiping it down, you're actually slightly lubricating it as well. So all the surfaces there, we're gonna do the exact same here on our bolt carrier. Just wipe everything down. Now of note, if you look at the lubrication guide, which I guess we'll get into here <laughs> since I'm talking about it. Um, basically, they say there's really only one part that needs lubrication. And uh, what that is is really the rails here where it's riding um, inside the carrier because that's steel on steel. And we'll show you that here. Uh, basically, where you have your steel wearing, you can see it's starting to wear here. For instance, if my camera will focus. Maybe, there you go. Yep, so those wear areas basically along the the bolt here where it rides in the carrier. That's where it recommends lubricating. But if you take a bug at what it's actually doing when it wears, you can see there's other wear parts. You see some wear here, uh, also on the other parts. So like I was saying about the beauty of a CLP or something like that is that when you get some lube on there just from general use while or generally wiping down while we're cleaning, it helps lubricate those areas a little bit. So sort of a bonus there. So we're done with that. And again, just keep wiping it down until it's as clean as you want it to be. If you want to keep using new new shirts or new patches until it's perfectly clean, that's totally fine. We'll leave that up to you. Here's the trigger group or the lower receiver assembly of the rifle, if you will. Um, when you push up on the safety lever, what it actually does is take tension off the rear just to show you guys who are having a hard time with that earlier, as I was, at least on camera anyway, obviously off camera, it's very simple. Um, but what you're doing is you can see this piece doesn't want to move and it doesn't want to release the tension. But if you push up on that safety lever, it moves freely. So that's what you're actually doing there. Anyway, uh, to clean this out, you can see it's a very open, user-friendly, cleaner-friendly assembly here. We're going to uh, spray some CLP again on a rag. And what I'm going to do here is put some on a toothbrush. And we're just going to brush around in there just to loosen up any of the uh, grime that may be in there. And when you actually want to move the trigger forward, put it on fire and hold the trigger. Don't let it just slam forward. It's not good for it. And you can brush around in there. Any of the loose areas. Again, it's big and open, which is fantastic from an end user perspective. And uh, at this point, we're just gonna wipe up any and all of that loose grime that came out. I'm doing it kind of quick. If you guys wanna be more detailed again, that's totally fine. But in the sake of time, 
We're gonna try to be a little bit expedient with it. If my camera is going in and out of focus there, I apologize. You can probably get the gist of what I'm doing. So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna do it for the whole era and just wipe it down. You can get it in your mag well too if you want at this point in time. And just keep going until all the carbon's gone or until enough carbon's gone that you feel good about it. So that's it there on the uh, lower. Moving on to the barrel, what I'm gonna do here is put some CLP on this piece and we're gonna thread it through the little eyelet that comes on this uh, rod, if you don't, or this uh, cable, I should say, if you have a cleaning rod, uh, it's gonna be the same thing, you're just you're gonna be pushing it through with the cleaning rod, so that's it. Now we're gonna start it through the chamber, and we're gonna push out to the muzzle. And just pull it through. You can see this one's not terribly bad, but we're just gonna keep doing that. Essentially just repeat that process. If you guys want to use a brush as well, I know some people love to use brushes. I generally find on a chrome wine barrel like this, it's totally not needed, but it makes people feel happy. If it makes you feel happy, by all means do it. So, you know, you have your chrome wine cold hammer forged barrel here, it probably doesn't need that much, but just keep going until the patch is clean or again, as clean as you want it to be. To clean in the chamber here, we're just gonna take a patch. We're gonna use the opposite side of the one we just used. You can see this one's not too bad to fight, despite a good bit of uh, suppressed firing. Uh, one good thing about not having a uh, direct impingement system is that it tends to leave everything relatively clean on the inside. Of course, the piston is gonna be the, uh, the opposite of that. It's gonna be pretty dirty, and we're gonna show you that here in a second. But, uh, so you're just gonna wipe that out, get all the grime out of there, make your chamber nice and uh, clean. And if you again, if you guys want to use chamber brushes, they do work really well in here. The AR ones work in this rifle as well. So that's it. You're just gonna clean it out, make sure it looks clean. And uh, at this point, we've already put some CLP on this piece of shirt here, and we're just gonna wipe down our piston. You can see there. That's what I was kind of referring to. That piston is a nasty little beast, uh, especially again after all that suppressed firing. But pistons can be pretty dirty before they ever start to have a problem. This rifle here has an exceptional uh, record of reliability. So wouldn't worry too much about that but you certainly want to keep it clean you know so that's why we're doing this so just keep wiping it down wipe down the exterior get as much of that stuff out of there as you can you'll probably never get it all on the piston that thing just tends to be a little bit dirty it's just kind of how it is but you can wipe down the outside of the barrel as well with a little bit of clp or if you're using solvents i recommend putting a little bit of light oil on there just to protect the finish of the firearm so for lubrication, you can see these wear areas right here that are already starting to wear on this rifle. And uh, you can see the same happening up here on this little lug here. So definitely recommend putting some lubrication on there. Of course, that we just cleaned it with CLP, uh, or if you use that anyway, there's gonna be some lubrication on there anyway. So we're gonna put it on there and uh, you can see other wear areas like right here. What I'd say is just kind of put some on your hands and just kind of work around the bolt as well. Um, if you wanna put, the drop down in there that's probably fine we'll do that again probably not necessary either what we're going to do now for reassembly is take our little lug here and work it back through essentially this little maze here on your carrier so line that piece up insert our bolt might take me a second to get quite lined up oh no we got it through the first time all right we'll take that and now put that back to being straight and you can see here our bolt's not going anywhere ready to be put back in the rifle we're gonna put the barrel in first. Really the order guys is, again, not really all that critical here. So just slide it in there. And you're gonna feel it kind of lock up when you get to the right spot. Just kind of work it all the way back. And that's it, clicks into place and your barrel's secure. You don't need to pull the tabs or anything like that. Give it a good tug, make sure it's secure. Once it is, you're good. Next, we're gonna put our bolt carrier assembly back in there and you're gonna want the bolt facing up when you put it back in. And we'll line it up, we'll show you kind of a critical piece here again you really can't do it wrong it's sort of soldier proof at that level but to make sure you're doing it right what you want to know is that the bolt is going through this little piece of polymer right here it's sort of a tube if you guys can see that here you want the bolt to go right through there that's the right place so at that point you're going to slide it forward now we're going to put the uh, charging handle out to either side whichever one you want it on you're going to pull it out and then push it in so again, earlier we showed you that tab was sticking out. Now you can see the tab is not sticking out. So once you get it forward, push it all the way home, and that's it. To put our trigger housing and lower receiver back on there, we're just gonna line these two pieces of polymer up. And again, you can't put it home without actually pushing up on that safety, pushing forward, and then you kind of just gotta give it a whack. There you go, gets into place. 
and uh, just call it solid. At this point, we're gonna just do a quick functions check with the weapon on safe, attempt to fire. Cannot do it with it on fire. Works, hold, hold the trigger back, cycle the action, ensure the trigger resets, put it back on safe. That's it. The gun is cleaned, lubricated, disassembled, assembled, all that jazz. If you guys have any questions about the process, anything we used here in the video, please, by all means, post one in the comment section with those uh, questions. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. I hope to help some of the new owners out there out. And uh, we hope to see you in the next video.